They're probably the last shipment we'll be getting in from Washington this year. I could make you a good price on the barrel, ma'am. Well, I don't think we could use the whole barrel, but... Oh, they're good keepers. I think, um... Hi. And they're so tasty. Maybe if you just want a bushel or two, Sorry. eh? Oh, no, thanks. I don't even like apples. How about a bushel of rubies, then? You haven't changed a bit. You have. You're pretty. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it was you the minute I heard your voice. I knew it was you from across the street. The way it tilts your head. What are you doing in town? How long have you been here? Two days. I'm going to live here. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I've thought about you a lot. I'd be silly to say I haven't. Just wondered what you were doing. So I figured you'd be married and settled down by now. Are you married? No. No, same old bachelor. <laughs> It's good to see you. Come on. What? Let's go have a cup of coffee and sit and talk for about 10 or 12 hours. I can't, Joe. I'm sorry, but I can't. Not now. Why not? It's so good to see you. of trouble. Wait. We can't stay in Virginia City. to be repeated outside of this office. Is that understood? Mm -hmm. It concerns a currency shipment, $90,000, from the Mint in San Francisco to the Virginia City Bank. Now, word might have leaked out about this, so we're taking some unusual precautions. Using an ordinary buckboard with two men, a driver and a guard. If you look at the map here... Now, they'll be leaving Truckee from the south, and with your permission, turn here, take that private road of yours all the way across the Ponderosa, and come into Virginia City from the west. Long way around, huh? Well, since we know that road pretty well, why don't we have uh, Paws and Joe and Candy that patrol it and make sure there are no strangers around? Well, thank you. That was my next request. And my deputy, Wade McPhail, can make the final sweep. Well, we'll be waiting. Anything else? That's it. Mr. Cardrack. You coming, Joe? I appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Anything we can do, you know. Sir. What's the matter with you, anyhow? <sighs> nothing. Nothing. I'm fine. He does look a little dazed. Yeah. What's the matter? You get kicked by a mule, buddy? No, I didn't get kicked by a mule. Guess who I just saw? Who? Emily Anderson. 
Here? In Virginia City? 20 minutes ago, in front of the Mercantile. Did I hear you say Emily Anderson? Yeah. She's in town. She's gonna live here. Hmm. I'll tell you about it on the way home. Uh, who's Emily Anderson? A gal that uh, Joe met down in Monterey about four or five years ago. He's gonna marry her. Paul wrote a letter inviting she and the family up. Letter came back unopened. He ain't never heard from her since. What's his name? That won't add anything. Now, you let me be the judge of that. What's his name? Joe Cartwright. Cartwright? Cartwrights are pretty important people. I guess they are. Knowing somebody like that, how come you married me? Because I wanted to marry you. Please, Wade, believe me, that's why I want to get away. Oh, uh, I'd believe you. Look, we're in a new town. I've got a new job. Deputy Marshal in charge of the new Virginia City office. You meet Joe Carvite in the street. You want me to give up something I've been working for nine years to get? Yes, because I love you. Because I don't want anything to happen to our Well, marriage. what's going to happen? No, he's not going to bother you. I guarantee you, he's oh, not going to bother you. Oh, wait, it's not that. Well, what is it? Well, come on, Em, speak to me. I'm not sure how I feel about him. The fire never went out. You're still in love with him. No, I'm... I didn't say that. I... Wade, now listen to me. I'm not sure how I feel. There's still some fire left. You're still in love with him. Wade, now listen. I'm not sure. If Joe Cartwright and I see each other, well, now that's the truth. And that's a fair warning. And that's why I want to leave. Please, Wade. A man walks by and we pick up and run? No, Em. We're staying right here. Are you so sure of me? If Joe Cartwright can take you away from me, then our marriage isn't much. We'd better find out. You might uh, start by putting things away. This place looks less like a freight shed and more like a home. I'll be back around midnight. The burial chamber is located in the center of the Great Pyramid, and it is here that the mummy of the pharaoh Khufu, or as the Greeks called him, Cheops, was laid to rest with all the treasure and plunder of his reign. I visited the chamber, a dark, oppressive room, lit only by torches, long since looted of all its wealth, weighed down by tons of masonry. May I have the next slide, please? One of the women of Cairo. They always go about in public totally veiled. If I had so much as caught a glimpse of her face, it would have meant instant death. I've got to stop a few minutes, Doctor. We have to pause, ladies and gentlemen, to make some adjustment in the mechanism. Would someone turn on the house lights, please? Can you imagine that? Pile up all them rocks just to bury yourself. Bury yourself. Don't run the 
this time. It's the farthest thing from my mind. so many times I didn't get the answer. <laughs> well, the letters returned. Yes, I wrote the Parkers, the people I stayed with in Monterey. They said you'd gone. They didn't know where. San Francisco. Oh, Joe is my father. They didn't mind just squaring me around. The dances, the picnics, riding together. Joe, that was the most wonderful time of my life. Was mine too. Oh, it was mine too. Oh, the last night before you left, and you brought up the subject of marriage. Well, he moved us inside of a week. He said you were too impulsive, too wild. I tried to sneak you a letter, but it burned it. I even tried to run away. And he locked me in my room. Spring, this great temple is almost totally submerged by the floodwaters of the Nile. In fact, here you see a native boat moored in the very gateway of the same temple you just saw. I love you. edifices ever erected in the history of man. and wait for him. Now, wait a minute. I'll find out what this is all about. I'll tell you what this is all about. That's my wife. I'm a fool to get in a street fight and lose my dignity. But he's gonna keep me on. Thanks a lot, Em. Don't call me that. I despise it. Oh, I'm sorry. Emily, you shamed me tonight. You shamed yourself. It wasn't my fault. You wouldn't listen to me. Oh, well, it's not gonna happen again. You know, your father told me. He said that what you need is a rough bit in the mouth and a strong hand on the reins. And from now on, that's what you're gonna get. Put on your ring. Did you hear me? 
should, and I won't have to. Now get in. What are you doing out here? I had to come to apologize. Joe, I'm sorry that I didn't tell you I was married. Oh, that's all right. Anybody else in your family you haven't told me about? No. No, no children, nothing? No, and you are angry, and I can't blame you. You should have told me, Emily. Joe, if I told you, would you have held me in your arms? And would you have told me that you still love me? No. Well, that's why. Joe. Joe, I had to know. I know that... that I love you. All right, it's been said. I don't think either one of us is the better for it. We've got nothing to talk about, Emily. You're married. Your husband made that very clear the other night. Joe, do you think my marriage was made in heaven? It wasn't. It was made by signing a county register with my father at my elbow. It was made by a little man droning words that I was just too tired to care about. Don't you understand why I had to talk to you? Don't, don't you see? All I see is that you're married. Joe. Joe, we can get it back. We deserve it. Oh, let's let's go away. Anywhere you say. Just like that, huh? This very instant. I'm as much as told Wade that, that there's nothing left, and what I haven't said, he must know. Joe, marriage is in the heart. True marriage. And and you're in my heart. And I don't think you can look at me and say that I'm not in yours. Oh, Emily, you're there. Which way do we go, darling? North, south? We go in opposite directions, Emily. Go home to your husband. Joe.
You take it easy. I'll get you some help. Guns, both of you. That's my brother. I know that, but I don't know you that well. And I'm a careful man. Now go ahead and help him. Is he alive? Yeah, but barely. He's hurt bad. I gotta get him to the doctor in a hurry. We will. It occurs to me you're an awful long way from where you're supposed to be. So was Joe Cartwright. And so was this. He hasn't moved or said a word. That's understandable. Shock. Heavy loss of blood. That long, rough ride in the buckboard. I'll stay with him tonight. Thank you, Doctor. He's young and healthy, Ben. Rest is what he needs now. And what I need is coffee and a sandwich. He's resting, Marshal. Will be for some time. Did he say anything? Well, he, uh, he was unconscious and has been all along. Hasn't said a word. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. But he will make it, won't he? I'm sure he will. Well, how soon can I talk to him? Tomorrow, maybe. More probably the day after. That long? Not even then, if he develops a fever. Well, I'm sure he'll be all right. I, I just want to get the doctor some food. Huh? You two saw the buckboard? That's right. Ken and I rode out early. Went along either side of the road to make sure there was no ambush. We rode all the way from the grove to center road. When we saw the buckboard coming, we uh, we got way back up off the road in case they might be a little nervous. We saw them both. They waved to us. Uh, they were all right at that time. Joe was, uh, oh, 10, 20 minutes behind us. And uh, your deputy was supposed to be the same distance behind him. Well, then if you rode all the way from the Grove, you went past the place where it happened. That's right. Right by it. As a matter of fact, we, we flushed a, a flock of crows right there on that spot, didn't we? Yeah, if there had been anybody around there, the crows would have been gone. Matches what I found out there. Tracks left by a wagon, a team, and four different riders. You, Hoss, your brother, and my deputy. Nobody else. Kind of narrows it down to two suspects, my deputy and Joe Cartwright. Well, I know Joe Cartwright, and I don't know your deputy, so I vote for him. With me, it's the other way around. I don't know Joe Cartwright. I do know Wade McPhail. He's worn that badge and worked for me for nine years. Nine years of excellent record. Marshal, your deputy McPhail was four or five miles from where you're supposed to have been. Tell them what you told me. The buckboard was late. That's 
right. It was. I figured something went wrong and I went to find out. McPhail, wait for me outside. I'll be with you in a minute. I don't know whether your deputy shot that driver in a guard or not, but I do know that he tried to shoot Joe Cartwright in the street last night. We've heard his story. We haven't heard Joe Cartwright yet. And in case you're wondering, I don't believe anything until it's been proven. I'll keep an eye on both of them. Excuse me, Emily. Oh, hey, that's all right. There's mail on the table. What happened to all the fire and fury? Uh, storm's blown over. That well, was a pretty fair gale while it lasted. It's a good-looking fellow, that young Cartwright. Of course, he's not exactly seven feet tall, like you led me to believe. I don't think he'd light up a room just by walking in. Wait. Please don't make fun of me. Hot roast? And brown gravy. It's my favorite meal. <laughs> I know. So, we're gonna pick up the pieces and put them back together and start all over again, huh? I'd like to. Wait, I think we can. Maybe you're right. I thought you'd have more done by now. Oh, I should have. I went out. Shopping in town? Yes. What'd you buy? Oh, I was looking for some material for those curtains upstairs, but I couldn't find a thing I liked. You want to try that again? Wait, don't play cat and mouse with me. It's part of my trade. Only works when the mouse has something to hide. I saw you with him. You followed me. Duty took me out that way. Sit down. I'll have to take off the rose. Now the pot rose can wait. Sit down. I don't quite know what to do with you. I could throw you and your clothes out on the road. You'd given me cause enough encouraging another man. No, I didn't encourage him. Well, you certainly did last night. But not today. He uh, told me to meet him. Did he? Yes. I forbade it. And he just crooks his finger and you go scooting off to meet him. He said if I didn't, he'd make trouble for you after last night. He threatened me? Well, not in so many words, but it was plain enough. I went because I was afraid for you, Wade. They're such a powerful family. Yes. I'm beginning to learn that. If he'd come here, I could have told him right then that I didn't want to see him again. But it was a note pushed under the door. I didn't even see who brought it. Signed by him? Well, of course. I should have known you want to see it. I burned it. I was ashamed. Well, that helps a little. What did he want to see you about? He wanted me to go away with him. But I told him no, and that was the end of it. Did he say when? Right then. 
You say where? South, New Orleans. Just that far, New Orleans? I didn't really listen. South America. Family like his, scandal and all, that's what I'd do. Well, he did say something about a ship. Go on. A fine house, servants. High living costs a lot of money. Even rich men don't have that much cash in their pockets. Did he show you the money? Wait, I told him I wouldn't go away with him. I have to know. Did he have the money? Did he say he could get it? What difference could it make? Tell me. He said there'd be lots of money. Would be. Would be. For sure. Yes. How many times do I have to tell you? Once more, and not just to me. Go and take the supper off the stove and get your shawl. How long after you left Joe did you hear the shots? Oh, it was a long time. Did you give any thought to them? It was somebody hunting. Emily, I know this has been very unpleasant and embarrassing for you. And for you, Wade. But what you've told me could be very important. There's something going on that I haven't been told about. What is it? You didn't tell her? Uh, well, no. I, I figured what... What she has to say would mean more if she didn't know. I see. Emily, there was an attempted robbery on the Ponderosa today. Two men were killed. Joe Cartwright. He's seriously wounded, unable to talk as yet. However, the doctor says he will recover. Now, you haven't been under oath here. Is there anything you'd like to add to what you've already told me? Or change? No. All right, Emily, thank you. You made my job a lot easier. Wade, you can take her home. I'll let you know if I need her again. See, it was, a, it was the guard and the driver. I fired the warning shots. And next thing I knew, I was here. Two more questions, Marshal. That's all. Before the shooting, you talked to Mrs. McPhail. What about? That's personal. It has nothing to do with the shooting. Might be helpful if you did answer. She, uh... She wouldn't leave her husband. I talked her out of it. That's all, Marshal. You can try again tomorrow. All right, I'll be back tomorrow. And I'll keep coming back until I know exactly what happened out there. shot, but Cartwright didn't see who shot him. That's right. And there were no strangers out there. That's been established. The driver or the guard might have shot Or I could have. You Cartwrights are big people around here, and I'm just a stranger, and you've got the hangman's not all the time. That's not true. Mr. Cartwright. I've got a 
question for you. It, it might throw some light on this. Answer it for me if you're not afraid to. You ask it and I'll answer it. You're rich. But would your son be able to lay his hands on enough money to pay for two people to go to South America and keep them living in style for two or three years? No. All right. Take that with what my wife told you and you got motive for robbery and murder. Your wife said she refused to go with Joe Cartwright. So she did. But if a man is foolish enough to think a married woman might run off with him, he's a fool enough to think that $90,000 in cold, hard cash might persuade her. Well, you just think whatever you want to think. Marshal, I'll see you at the Pondros in the morning. Sit down. Deputy, could we be alone for a few minutes? Certainly, Marshal. You've been wearing that badge for nine years. You should know there are two ways to investigate a crime. One way, the wrong way, you keep bending everything you find to make it fit the way you want it to fit. Now, that's what you're doing. Am I? The other way, you keep an open mind. You keep digging until you have all of the evidence from all of the witnesses. Now, you may not find what you want to find. You're going to find Joe Cartwright innocent. Let's have that badge. He's going to be all right. Yes, he's going to be all right. I came here, Mrs. McPhail, because I wanted to find out why you lied about my son. Mr. Cartwright. Now, I know Joseph. Why did you lie? I didn't say anything that would hurt him. Everything you said placed him under suspicion of murder. You painted the picture of a, an excited young man, eager to run off with another man's wife. And those who don't know my son could very easily believe that. And there are some who could look at you and find you motive enough for robbery and murder. Well, I know that's not a compliment. No. I didn't come here to flatter you, Mrs. McPhail. I came to find out how long you're going to stick to that story. It's not a story. You're going to have to tell it in court. Under oath, Mrs. McPhail. There's Joseph there, looking at you, listening to you. Are you going to be able to do that? Don't badger my wife, Mr. Cartwright. All I ask is that you tell the truth. I did. I did! Cartwright! Not till I tell you. Calhoun took my job, my badge. No surprise. I knew it was going to happen. Well, I didn't. I'm sorry. Get out. Sorry for you both.
What's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. Everybody. The Cartwrights, the sheriff, the doctor, they're all out at the scene. You seen the shootings? So? Well, they didn't ask you to go. I didn't expect them to. Oh, but they should have. Unless they were expecting to find something that... Did you do it, Wade? Me? <laughs> 90,000 in cold cash and the thought never crossed my mind. Joe Cartwright didn't? Could you still see him when you heard those shots? That's not what you told me in the marshal. Another lie, Emily? Leading hard on that shovel made a good print. It looks a little big. But I have the left boot of one of those other pairs. Marshal, uh, Mr. Cartwright, uh, my wife has something to tell you. I lied. Joe didn't want to go away with me. It was the other way around. And I could still see him when I heard the shots. He couldn't have killed those men. Thank you, Mrs. McPhail. But Wade didn't do it either. No, we know that. Joe told us something this morning. We of me of help. He told us he'd never been near that hole that they were digging to bury the money in. These are the boots he was wearing that day. They were boot prints all over the place. I saw them myself. Yeah, but Joe's. Boots didn't fit any of them. Those do? These do. Who do they belong to? Belong to the driver and the car. The way it looks, the driver did the digging, and my guess is the guard stood over him with a gun. Yeah. I know it won't help much, but I'm, I'm sorry. I think we're all sorry about a lot of things. Wait. You'll be needing this. The time I got my patient back to Ponderosa. I know how you must feel about me. 
so long. Why don't I go on ahead, and I'll be packed and out of the house by the time you get there. You're probably right about how I feel. You don't have to go. Wait. I do want another chance. And if you'll give me another chance, I promise... No, Emily. Don't make promises you can't keep. All I ask is... just say you'll try. I will try. just said that she and her husband were in some kind of trouble and needed help. Uh, she's, uh, well, uh, I haven't seen her for about three years, but she was... Oh, you didn't have the time off, no question about that. As a matter of fact, I need any help. Calvin Butler's an old friend of mine. Remember Cal? Mm-hmm. He's uh, an old-timer. Yeah, he built the town of Butlerville, part of the whole community. Good man to know if there's any trouble up there. Sounds like, yeah. Joe, why don't you go along with uh, Candy to Butlerville? If he needs any help, you can take him to Cal. Fine. And let me know what's happening. When do you want to leave? As soon as possible. First thing in the morning? Good. Hey, Joseph. You know the difference between a table and an ottoman? Sure, I do. Well, take your feet off the table.
Like you need some help? Sure, I appreciate it. Looks like you're a little trouble, huh? Give him a hand, will you, can you? Yeah. I guess we're not heavy enough. Now you're just right. Your pole's too short. That's it. Oh, get it up there. That's good. All right, we got her. Sure glad you men came along. I don't know what I'd have done. If I'm not out of this valley, come dark, I might not get out at all. What's stopping you? A bullet. What are you talking about? Man homesteaded next to me, Billy Harris. He got burned out. It was after dark. His wife and young'un were in the place. They died there. You know who did it? Ain't got the slightest idea. But you can bet I ain't gonna live in a place where people get burned out in the middle of the night. Martha, we'd best be on our way. Hey, we'll give you a hand with the team. Thanks, but you done enough. Thank you both. Pleasure. Martha, help me hitch up the team. Mister, where are you from? Butlerville. that killed her and the boy. You or your son there, or your foreman, you burned him to death. Let go of my bridle. You'll pay for what you've done. If that judge don't make you pay, the good Lord will. Ready, sir? Hello, Steve. Uh, uh, Sam, you're all gonna be right comfortable. Hot water any time you want it, Mr. Butler. Uh, liquor in the room. That looks pretty deserted. Supper time. Not long past that by my stomach. Where are we supposed to meet that young lady? They just go to the Butler Hotel. She'd find me there. The only hotel in Butlerville must be the Butler. Yeah. Like 
couple of rooms, please. I'm sorry, I only got one left. All right, we'll take it. Oh, Calvin Butler's staying here, huh? That's why there isn't much room. He takes up most of it. Well, it's his hotel. I guess he's got the right. You know him? Yeah, he's a friend of my father's. Uh, wonderful man. Up the stairs, third door on your left. Thank you. You talk almighty rough for a man who's going to own the ranch one day. You keep on the way you're going, and there won't be a ranch to own. And I won't be alive to own it. A man has got to fight. Not your way, Pa. This isn't 30 years ago. And those aren't Indians out on that range. They're Comancheros. The settlers come to open new land. The same way you came 30 years ago. And they have as much right here now as you did then. No, they haven't. This was Indian land when I came. Oh, Pa, you're blind. You won't let go of yesterday and you've... Can't see tomorrow. Huh? You can pull out any time you want to. Oh, I'd pull out if I could. But I can't. None of us can. Now that that woman and child are dead, it'll be a job keeping any of us alive. Well, I've seen a lot worse. You needn't worry about it. Parker's wife is still in the dress shop. She hasn't tried to go to Parker. She hasn't tried to send word to him. You tell the men to keep Scar in the country. I want Parker found and brought in here. Well, what's wrong now? All I'm asking you is to find Parker and offer him some money. Enough money to keep him quiet. You can do that, can't you? If you can't buy Parker off, what'll you do then? I'll do what I have to. You ought to know that by now. See, you don't look like you had a drink all day. Matter of fact, friend, I haven't. I expect you're getting thirsty about now. Yeah. yeah, I could use a drink. How about you? Want to join me? It would be a pleasure. All right. It's kind of quiet in this town. Not too many people moving around. What's going on? You ain't hurt? No, no, I just got in. What you don't know won't hurt you. Yeah, what's that supposed to mean? Take, take some advice and don't ask a lot of questions. A few questions, a few drinks. I ain't got no answers. What about the Harris family? They got burned out. Do you know anything about that? Friend, you better do yourself a favor. You best get out of town. Hey, your friend show up? Ready, Ed? No sign of her. I didn't have any luck. I asked questions all over town, but I didn't get any answers. Just like those two people we saw out in the road. They act like nothing's wrong while they're shaking in their boots. Somebody's really got them scared. There's somebody. Why don't you talk to Cal Butler? That's not a bad idea. If anybody knows what's going on around here, it'd be Butler. you're here. I was afraid maybe you wouldn't be able to come and then... You couldn't have kept me away. <sighs> Joe Cartwright, he's a friend of mine. Ma'am. Candy. Jess has been shot. Is he hurt bad? I don't think so. How did it happen? Well, I'm not sure. But either Cal Butler did it or he had somebody do it. Cal Butler, are you sure? It doesn't sound like Butler. I'm sure. Why? What's, what's Butler got against Jess? Jess is land manager for this territory, and he's been doing all the surveying. Been helping the homesteaders every way that he can. I, I find this awfully hard to believe about the Butlers. I mean, I, I've always been told they were good people. Do you call pulling down fences, burning homes, burning a woman and child, you call that good people? And you're absolutely sure it's Butler? Jess is. 
He was there the night Cal Butler and his son Steed and their foreman Torrance set fire to the Harris place. Did he see them do it? And that's why he was shot. They know he's a witness, probably the only witness. Did he go to the sheriff? <sighs> yes. He reported it to Sheriff Daniels. Next morning, riding home, he was shot. What did the sheriff do about it? He works for Cal Butler. Where is Jess now? Old man Parsons found him and took him to his house. Then he came and told me. You see, I've been afraid to go out there to take a doctor because the sheriff's been watching me. Now, there's a circuit judge and the U.S. Marshal going to come day after tomorrow. That's Monday. If we could just last out till then, Candy. We'll last, don't worry. What do you think, Joe? Well, I think they're liable to find him sooner or later. We better get to him first. Yeah, good idea. I'll go with you, Candy. Don and Miles and go after them. Jess. Barbara? Oh, Jess. Where have you been? Well, I couldn't come till I got help. Sheriff Daniels has been watching me. Where's Mr. Parsons? He took his wife and ran off. He's afraid Butler would kill him for helping me. Your leg. How is it? It's not bad. Candy. Yes? I should have known you'd be the first one she'd turn to. Who else did she have? Oh, you're hot. It's all right. It's a little warm, that's all. Hey, you're right. I followed three of them. One of them stand and look out, the other two run off. Uh, Jess, uh, this is Mr. Cartwright, a friend of Candy's. Jess? But well, he found out what they wanted to know, where he is. Joe, we got to take him into town. But Candy, we... Barbara, out here we won't stand a chance if we really got up against it. Now, what's in town? A solid jail. And a sheriff had just some killing. Not with us watching. But we still have to get him past those three men that followed us out here. I just want if we leave right away. Don't I have anything to say about it? Not a thing. In town, we can lock you in that jail and lock them out. It's just till the day after tomorrow anyway, Jess. Then the judge and the marshal will be here. Like the man said, I don't have anything to say about it. Gun belt and drop it on the floor. You can't do this. I'm the law here. Not anymore, you're not. All right. In the cell. Come on. Move. Come on. for a lot of trouble. Yeah, maybe I am. Just what is it you think you're doing? 
That man needs protection. His jail's gonna give it to him. Well, I'm the sheriff. I'll look after him. Ha! Last time he came to you for help, you shot him. Hey, wait a second. Better handcuff him and gag him. You don't want him shot out the window. Good idea. Here, make yourself a deputy. Turn around. We're gonna pay for this. I tell where that doctor is. I'll get him for Jess. He lives in the office over the saloon. Right. How are you feeling, Jess? All right. Candy, are you sure we did the right thing, bringing him here? We did the only thing. What are you looking at me like that for? I was remembering when you and I were a couple of law-abiding men. Wasn't much more than a couple of weeks ago. Man has got a right to fight for what he won once. When people fight, someone's bound to get hurt. What are you getting so high and mighty about? You're in as deep as I am. Yes, sir, I sure am. You handed me a bear and I took him by the tail. This just ain't no letting go. Butler, I'm Joe Cartwright. You remember me? Oh, young Cartwright. Come in. Thank you. You know my son, Steed? Yeah, I think we met a couple of years ago when we were down here. Yeah, two years ago, October. Well, you go on about your chores now, Seed. Young Cartwright and I are gonna get along all right. I see you again. You bet. Huh. I always like to have a little nip in the morning. How about you? Oh, I'll pass, thank you. Well, I always admired your pa. He always admired you. I wonder how he'd feel if he knew you were sitting down at the game. It ain't none of your business. Say don't come home a loser. You're in Butterville to help Parker? I came with a man who did. My father sent me here to say hello to you. Said if I needed any help, all I had to do was ask you and I'd get it. You're in with the wrong bunch. It doesn't seem like that to me. Sit down, son. Let me tell you how it really is. Yeah, Mr. Butler. You tell me how it is. What's Jess? He's much better now that the doctor's got the bullet out of him. How are you? Oh. I don't know what I would have done without you. Easy, easy, easy. Oh. What's wrong with me? Nothing. Nothing at all. I love Jess. I really do. I know, I know. You're just tired, that's all.
What a look at you. Go on, beat it. A man had set fire to a house. Burn up a woman and child. He's something to see. I said, get out of here. Tomorrow, the judge gets here. You'll get yours. Parker's gonna say he saw you do it. Men say so ain't enough. I saw it too. I'm gonna tell him. You'll hang. matter with you? Tell me. You got the Sunday fidgets. It's cause for not having enough work to do. Now, what you ought to do is go out there and chop you up a cord of wood, a whole cord. Do all your work for you. Well, that's sort of a side benefit, ain't it? You know what I'd like to do? Take a long ride to Butlerville. Oh, I quit worrying, Paul. What kind of trouble can Candy and Joe get into any of You feel like taking a long ride? To Butlerville? If we left now, we could be there by noon tomorrow. You talk me into it. Well, my guess is that Dr. ran straight across to the hotel from here. Cal Butler knew all about us locking you in and locking up the sheriff. And he insists we're making a big mistake. Other ranchers stand to lose as much as he does. Other ranchers must have burned the Harris place. That's what Cal Butler says. I know what I saw. All right, you know what you saw. In order to convince the circuit judge of that, you're going to have to find somebody else that saw what you did. Otherwise, it's going to be your word against Cal's. My word will stick. Maybe. Did you know that Ella Harris and the little girl were supposed to be at Twin Forks till late next week? That's what everybody thought. That's where I thought they were, too. But it doesn't make any difference. They came home early. Their bodies were in the ashes. And you can't excuse them away. All right, here's what can happen. It's what Cal Butler calls buying peace for the valley. You testify that it was dark that night. It was hard to see the people's faces. You can't really identify anyone. If you do that, you can have yourself a nice ranch and a nice bank account. You think about that. I knew Ella Harris. She was a decent woman. And a little Jennifer. She was a nice kid. They were good people. Barbara, there's our ranch. There's money. How do you want it? You know how I want it, Jess. Tell Mr. Butler that Mr. and Mrs. Parker told him to go to hell. I'll be happy to. Badges. Well, you know that little barn back at the hotel where people keep their horses? Yeah. This is squirrel lives back there. I've been trying to catch him all week. Just a little while ago, I seen him running for the barn, and I chased him. He went under a bunch of straw. I dug in the straw, and there he was. 
Look, look kid, uh, we're, we're glad you found the squirrel. We're kind of busy right now. No, it wasn't the squirrel. It was Billy Harris. And he looked at me like he was dead. What'd you say to Alex? Back in the hotel. Come on. Is he dead? Yeah. What'd he die of? You sure this is Billy Harris? Yeah, that's him. You know, his missus and little girl burnt. Yeah, I know. Why don't you get on home now, son, huh? Go on. Go on, get. Mr. Butler, Billy Harris is dead. Somebody strangled him and left his body in an alley underneath some straw. I don't know anything about it. I think you do. You best get out of town, young man. Do you hear? You'll be almighty sorry if you don't. One o'clock, I guess. Doesn't the time go slow? Yeah, I've been waiting. You got any idea what time the judge and the marshal will be here tomorrow? Maybe by noon if they leave Clinstock early. Well, let's hope they leave Clinstock real early. Candy. Hmm? I know I've asked a lot of you. Well, a man has to feel as good for something. And I'm sorry for what I've done. For asking me to come here? No. For what happened after you came. That didn't mean anything. Candy, you know I admire you. I think you're the kindest, the most gentle, the most capable man that I've ever known. But I... Not a man to marry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Sorry if I hurt you, Candy. I think you kind of bloodied your own nose a bit, too, didn't you? It was right. It was Billy Harris's body under the straw. He was dead. When I would have talked to Cal Butler, he lied, said he didn't know anything about it, and suggested we get out of town. We're staying. Forty-six. More than twenty years ago, I called this place Toluca. Then, not more than six or seven houses it was. That was the summer your mother and I took over this land. Our nearest neighbor was uh, Carl Smith, uh, up a hundred miles or so to the north. Comancheros burned us out in fifty-one. Then in fifty-six. I lost all my cattle. Zero weather for weeks. Snow six foot deep. You know, it kills a man to see his cattle die one by one, black, out there against the snow. 
In 61, things got better. I told your mother, Anna will never have to worry again. She died that spring. Man builds a place. He builds a life. He's got to fight to keep it. Why did that Sam have to kill Billy Harris? Sam didn't have a choice, Pa. You put Billy Harris's word with Parker's, if it ever came to that, it'd be the gallows for all three of us. But Harris wasn't there the night we burned his house down. Doesn't matter. If he said he was, people would believe him. But to kill him right now, in the middle of town. Huh. Now, we couldn't have picked a worse time or a worse place. Oh, he figured to take the body out of town and lose it somewhere after dark. But kid chasing squirrels had to catch him. Seems to me we weren't cut out for this sort of work. Wife comes home unexpectedly. A kid chases squirrels. Parker gets help and forts up in our jail. Everything we put our hands to turns out wrong. Ah, no. Ah, no. He's not as bad as all that. For you and me and Sam, it's... It's as bad as falling down a well. There's no way to stop until we hit the bottom. Hey. What are you doing out there? I'm trying to get some exercise. Just being cooped up in a cell is hard to take. I know what you mean, but you better stay down. I know it's no fun being cooped up like this. I've been in jail a few times myself, but you're gonna have to take it easy. What were you in jail for? Oh, I was innocent, just like everybody else. You must have missed Parker. I don't think so. If that shot hit him and just wounded him, they would have sent somebody for Doc Wilkins. Now, if you hit him and killed him, they would have come out. There would have been nothing to keep him in there. It wasn't an easy shot. He was back from the window. But time was running out, and I had to take it. I swear I saw him fall. No, you missed him. Doesn't figure any other way. Hi, you all right? Son, you remember me telling you about the trouble your mother and I had? The three Cheyennes on the way out from St. Joe? They trailed us for four days before I finally killed them. That was a fight. Man, that was a fight. We're probably not going to get out of here before noon tomorrow. It's a long time for this to go without a doctor. Hey, don't worry, I'll live. That's all we need is to bring the doctor in here. We'd get over and tell Butler they shot me instead of Parker. We'd have them all down here in a minute. Yep. The only chance is for them to think they killed Parker. Maybe we can keep him alive till the marshal gets here. That's good enough. And hey, make sure they don't see him through the window. Huh? I'm going to put him in the other cell. Good idea. We gotta get him in that other cell before somebody spots him. Go on out, Barb. Stay low. Stay low. How's Joe, Candy? Oh, he's hurting some. He's gonna hurt a lot more before he gets better. Are you gonna get a doctor for him? And what more? All right, Sheriff, come on. Keep your head down when your friends may shoot another hole in it. There you go. It's quite a 
Pretty man, your friend. Oh, yeah, he's all right. You too. I never liked you much. I know. It was Barbara. And all the things you were that I wasn't. And then the first thing she does when I get into trouble, she calls you for help. And thank heaven she did. We're not out of the woods yet, kids. But we will be, I know. And I want you to know that Barbara and I, if you ever need any help, we'll be here. No sign of him so far. You getting moved? Yeah, I switched cells with the sheriff. Good. How's he feeling? His leg's hurting. She's worried. But they'll make it. They got something extra going for him. Yeah, what's that? Each other. Huh. Mm-hmm. We gotta go after Parker. Sam killed Parker. Claimed he did anyway. But he didn't. How do you know that? Well, it's just not human nature for those people to stay in there that long with Parker dead. What do you want to do about it? Look at it this way. This is Butlerville, our town. A couple of gun hands come into town, scare everybody half to death, take over the jail and run the sheriff off. Right now, Parker and his wife are held prisoner in that jail. Now, we don't know why, but this is Butler, Bill, and that's our jail, and we got to get him out. Yes, you're right. We'll get Parker out alive and talk some sense to him. Either way, we'll clear ourselves with the marshal and the judge. All right. All right, I'll go with you. Uh, you can go with me if you want, Pa, but... Uh, you better brace yourself, because... Uh, this is the bottom of the well. Here they come. cell back there and a bushwhacker shot me through the window. You shot the wrong man. I asked you to leave town. And I told you I wouldn't. Where's Parker? Locked in a cell, safe and sound. I want him. And his wife. You're not getting them. Look here, son. I've known your father for 20 years. I'm sorry to see you hurt. And I don't want to see you hurt anymore. Look, you better understand, this is Butler country. We take care of our own problems. And we're the law here. Not anymore. Tomorrow the U.S. Marshal and the judge will be here. Then all of you are going to stand trial for the death of that woman and that child and the murder of Billy Harris. Oh, no. I'm not going to go on trial. Glad you came, Mr. Cartwright. Man, 
Uh, are you leaving? Yes, Calvin. But Ben, I need you. You can help. No. No, I can't help. Because my foreman shot your Joe? No, Calvin. Because your orders caused the deaths of three people. But this is an accident, Ben. Pure accident. It could happen to anybody. All you need to do is to say that. Just one word from you. If I could help Billy Harris, or his wife, or his child, I'd do everything possible to help you. But I, I can't help them. You put them right out of reach. I guess I won't be able to help you. Yeah. You're right, man. Nothing that anybody can do. I lost my boy. Everything I own. Shouldn't have paid a high enough price to open up this range to new settlers. Much too high, Mr. Cartwright. Well, you, uh, see that it stays open. If you need any help, you call. Bye. All right. Thanks. Well, Jess? Barbara? <sighs> I'm not much good at saying goodbye. Goodbye, Candy. Thanks. Good luck. It's so beautiful. So different from... Yes, it is. Well, so it was just a vacation trip. Well, it is for you. New country to see and it's enjoy. It's not for you. Oh, it's not that bad. Just one more job one and... One more job. One more man to send to prison. No, back to prison. Billy Miller escaped, okay, remember? Okay, come on. Come on, honey. The stage is ready to go. Good looking at that watch. It's not gonna make the stage come in on time. Joe, Candy. Hey, Rick, how's it going? Hi, Rick. Mr. Cartwright, I. No, listen, did you get that horse shot? No, not yet. That mare throws his front foot out a little bit. I was gonna build a special shoe and wait at some on the inside to see if I couldn't correct it. Yeah, it might be a good idea. I hear tell there's a marshal on his way into town. Yes, there is, as a matter of fact. Old friend of mine, Luke Mansfield. 
Oh, he, he's just coming here for a vacation, Rick. I don't think it has anything to do with you. After 15 years. Luke, my son Joseph. Joe, of course. How are you? And uh, this is a uh, candy, uh, one of my uh, hands. Candy, how are you? <laughs> Clumsy me, thank you. That'll be all, boy. She can stand up without your help. Father, if he hadn't caught me, I'd be flat in the dust. He was trying to help. I know what he was trying to do. Marshal, I, I was hoping that... Ben, I brought along a surprise for you. I want you to meet my little girl, Lori. Father, how many times do I have to tell you I'm not a little girl? Indeed, she's not a little girl. She's a beautiful young lady. Lori, how nice to see you. Hello. My son, Joseph. Pleasure, man. How do you do? And this is Candy. Ma'am. Now, you boys get the luggage down and the series right over here. Follow me. Thank you very much. Come on, dear. It's a real vacation. You know, take it easy, enjoy yourself. Well, as a matter of fact, I handed in my resignation a month ago. Now that Gloria's finished school, I thought I'd settle down and make a home for her. Well, then this one piece of unfinished business got in the way. Unfinished business? A man I put in prison a long time ago broke out 10, 12 months ago. We all thought that he went to Mexico. Only last week we heard that he headed this way. Well, since you're no longer Marshal, why are you tracking him down? It's a special case, Ben. I'm still carrying one of his bullets in my leg. Father. It's so beautiful here. Can't we just forget about that old Billy Miller? For today, at least. Oh, all right. I'm all unpacked. You should see the view from upstairs. There's the cutest little burrow in the corral. <laughs> yeah, he's a cute little one. Total stranger wandered in one day. We're waiting for his owner to come along and pick him up. <laughs> hey, you know something? There's nothing he'd like better than to be fed a big, juicy apple by a pretty little gal. Come on. Really, I can feed it? Sure. Oh, she's a sweet child. Bessie is a whirlwind and iron-headed sometimes, but she's a sweet child. Sweet she is, but a child she isn't. Oh, yes, she is, in more ways than one. All those years at school, she's got a lot of growing up to do. Well, all children do, Luke. But uh, tell me about this uh, Billy Miller. He's a very dangerous man, guilty of murder twice over. But all we could prove in court was mail robbery. Ben, in my bag upstairs, I've got $1,000. I'm offering it as a reward for him, dead or alive. Luke, uh... You're a pretty good marshal, so you're going to find out about this sooner or later anyway. Might as well tell you. There's a young fella in town. Been here about, oh, 10 or 12 months, working at the blacksmith shop. And he never made a secret of the fact that he served time in prison. But we all like him a great deal. Well, that's your privilege. But it's probably a mistake. Well, be that as it may, the reason I'm telling you this is it uh, can't be the same fellow you're looking for, because this one is a, a young'un. But his name is Miller, too. Not Billy Miller, Rick Miller. Be a relative. When a man's on the run, he always goes somewhere to find somebody for help. Family, maybe. Well, I didn't want to intimate that there was any relationship between them. Then I think I'd better ride into town and have a talk with this young fellow. You said he was at the blacksmith shop, huh? Well, yeah, he's at the blacksmith shop. Then I need a horse. Would you just... Yeah, sure, of course. Yes. So... And then I gotta change, I think.
look like I was saying, there's a dance Saturday night. That would be kind of a good idea if you were. Hey, wet. wait a minute, you two. I was the one that brought it up first. And the way I figured, I got first dig. Joe? What do you mean you get first digs? It was Candy and I that met her at the stage. I think if anybody gets first digs... It... Uh, Joe. Uh, Joe, your, uh, your pa is calling. Oh. Yeah, but you think about what I said, huh? See you later. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Hoss, he's, um, he's about half right. Uh, it was me and Joe that uh, picked her up at the stage. Oh, well, gentlemen, I'm sure there'll be enough dances for everyone. Now, I probably shouldn't admit this, but I've never been to a real dance. Oh, yeah? I, I, I've learned how. I learned how in school, but it was always just with the girls. Well, I'll tell you, Lori, this one Saturday night will be somewhat different. <laughs> well, I guess I must have made a mistake. I mentioned Rick Miller. And he immediately assumed that he was related to the fellow that he's tracking. And, boy, he's sure rough on anybody who's ever served time in prison. Well, maybe he's been a lawman too long. <sighs> maybe, but anyway, I'd like you to ride in with Luke, just so Rick knows he still has some friends. Settle to us. The biggest problem I have is not breaking a little gal's feet when I step on them. <laughs> you bet. Hey, where are you going, Joe? Hey, I gotta go to town. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, take your time. Don't hurry back. So, Lori, what did you do before you came out here? Oh, nothing really, just school. Uh, more oh, competition. Andy? Hi, Rick. Hello, Rick. Yes. Hey, Rick. You could have saved yourself a trip out here, old buddy. I was going to come get that horse tomorrow. Oh, well, thank you, Candy, but I wanted to come out anyhow. Oh, yeah, I'll bet you did. Hi. I didn't have a chance to thank you properly this morning. Are you Rick? Yes. Hi, I'm Lori Mansfield. Rick Miller. The, re the reason I came out, Miss Lori, is I, I I'd like to speak to your father. Of course. He's in the house. Come with me. We were just coming in to see you. This is Rick Miller. He wants to talk to you. Well, that saves me a ride into town. I'd be pleasant, please. Go in the house, Lori. Can't you be pleasant for a minute? He only wants to talk to you. Do as I say. Go in the house. Hope we'll meet again, Rick. Rick Miller. Where'd you do time, boy? Down in Yuma? With your Uncle Billy, or, or is he your cousin? Did you two work it out together before they let you go, boy? No, sir. Did you tell him you had a place ready and waiting for him when he broke out? No, sir. It wasn't like that at all. I want the truth, boy. You remember what it's like down there in Yuma Prison. I can put you right back there. Just like that. Father! Marshal, I came out here to tell you about Billy. He came all the way out here, and you treat him like an animal. What kind of a man are you? You ask me that, ask him. Look at him, sick with fear. It's written all over him. It's the mark of a jailbird. I wouldn't lay a hand on him. Anyway, I told you to go in the house. I know what you told me. Staying right here. Pull yourself together, boy. Nobody's going to touch you. You said you came out here to tell me something. All right, let's hear it. Marshal, I was up in Fernley when Billy broke out. I didn't know nothing about it till he got here. He was all shot up. Been riding for a long time, didn't have no care of medicine. I hit him in a shack up by where I was working. I reckon I shouldn't have done it, Mr. Cartwright, but he was my blood kin, my cousin. There weren't even time to get a doctor. He just kept getting sicker and sicker. He died in a couple hours. I buried him up there, Marshal. Well, now, isn't that convenient? You came all the way out here just to tell me. Father, stop it. Please. Billy had a good reason to want my hide. It's a trap, isn't it, boy? You want to sucker me out there with some tall tale just so Billy could have target practice? No, sir. One sure way to find out, Luke. We're about in Fernley. About three miles northeast of the old Silver Dollar Mine. Yeah, it's a long ride. You'll need company. Candy, Joe, you go along with Luke. And you'll need uh, supplies and bedrolls. Right. We'll get the supplies in town. This is official business. The government will pay for all we need. But there's a trap. We don't want him at our backs. 
Well, I'll, uh, I'll see that he stays here. When you find that grave, Father, remember to be ashamed. Laurie. You don't understand, dear. When I get back, we'll have a nice long talk. A nice long lecture, you mean? Really? Well, this time I'm not going to listen. Not unless you apologize first. Should be all right, Luke. I think so, Ben. Anybody else's hands, I'd wonder. Maybe later on, you and I can take a little ride around the ranch. Would you like that? See you later. What did you do to Rick last night? Tie him up and lock him in the barn? <laughs> no. What gave you that idea? In the tack room. <laughs> you said he'd... Stay until your father came back. There's no reason to tie him up. Or what are you talking about? <laughs> you went off to do some work. You believed him. Now, why, why couldn't father? Well, we know him. Your father doesn't. We've known him for close to a year. Like him. Can't say I agree with everything he does, like taking in an escaped convict. I don't think that was right, although I can understand it. He was cruel. You're not. No, Laurie. He's not cruel. Being a lawman in wilderness territory is pretty rough going. You can't just take every stranger face value. It might cost you your life. Your father helped make this country a, a fit place to live, and he did it mostly on his own. No one else to depend upon but himself. That still is no reason for him to treat Rick like an outlaw and a liar. He has no right to play God. That's what he does always with me. I think I was still five years old or something. All right, pass me that plate, would you please? You know, you can't blame a father for wanting his little girl to remain a little girl. Anyway, he hasn't had much chance to see you grow up. You know that, don't you? That was his own fault. Ever since I was little, he's kept me in boarding schools. He's never cared about me, Uncle Ben. If I as much as got a note from him on my birthday, it was heaven. Laura, you've got to believe this. Your father loves you very much. When your mother died, he couldn't keep you with him. It was impossible the way he was moving around all the time because of his work. He should have heard him yesterday. How happy he was talking about the home he was going to make for you and him. Is that for Rick? Yes, he said he wasn't hungry before. I thought I'd take it out. May I bring it to him? You said you trusted him. Of course. I wish he were like you, father and me. I can talk to you. There's never been anyone to talk to. I suppose no matter where you are, if you're lonely or miserable, whether you're in prison or... <laughs> a fancy Eastern school. Try 
talk about it so easily. I think you'd want to forget about it. Lie about it, even. When time, you mean? It wouldn't get me no place. Somebody somewhere would turn up who knew me, and I'd have to start all over again. I reckon it's best to face up to it right from the start. But it's so unfair. It's not what you've been that should count. It's what you are. Well, if I hadn't been caught robbing that cash box, I suppose I would have probably figured it was unfair that all I had to show for my trouble was $17. $17? 76 cents. They put you in prison for stealing $17? They put me in prison for stealing, Miss Laurie. Didn't matter how much. The way my father treated you yesterday. That's all right, Miss Laurie. It doesn't matter. You take me to the dance Saturday night. What? I know it isn't proper for the girl to ask, but I really would be proud if you'd be my escort to the dance on Saturday night. Oh, no, Miss Lori. I'd be the proud one. Can't you stop calling me Miss all the time? I'm honored, Lori. I didn't get here quite quick enough this time. Empty as a rain barrel. And a barrel. Uh, <clears throat> well, Hop Singh has uh, got the picnic basket prepared. You two could leave right now. How about it? I have the change first. Well, go ahead, Scoot. She and Rick have been together since breakfast. And it's perfectly all right, but you know, Loki wouldn't care for it, so make it a long ride. Huh? Well, sort of figuring on a nap. Horace, what's the matter with you? You got a whole afternoon ahead of you with a beautiful young girl? Yeah, that's just a problem. Don't you think she's a little too young? Oh, don't let her hear you say that. No. I'll get the buggy. Cake and stuff over here. Thank you, I couldn't. Uh oh. Sorry, Mr. Ant, but you're a little late for the picnic. Oh, 
them. <laughs> Seems no matter where you stop to eat, they always show up. Oh, sure they do. They got a system, you know. Yeah. A little guy sits on a little mound, and when he sees a horseman ride by with a picnic basket or a buggy go by with a picnic basket, he sends a signal to another little guy on another little mound who in turn sends it to another little guy on another little mound, and so on. You're fooling. Why, no. How else would they know where to go? You must think I'm still coloring picture books. No. No, I don't, Lori. You're... You're almost a grown lady. As a matter of fact, it won't be long till you'll be a grandmother with a shawl around your shoulders and rocking in front of a fireplace. What do you think of Rick? Well, I told you, I like him. We all do. Even though he's a jailbird? Well, that sets him apart a little. The way I figured, he made a mistake and paid for it. He's never lied about his background. He came into town, got a job at the blacksmith shop doing odd chores, and now he's probably one of the best blacksmiths I know. When do people stop remembering? I don't know, Laura. That's, that's hard to say. Look, if we're going to see Beaver Tail Falls, we better be on our way, huh? Uncle Ben sent us on this picnic so I couldn't talk to Rick. That's true, isn't it? Sort of. Yes, I think we better be getting back now. He said he'd be in in a minute. Oh, good. Did you enjoy it? Yes. It's yeah. lovely. Well, we're going to separate in a little while. If you want to freshen up. I'm going to take something out to Rick first. They already have. Uncle Ben, there's something I want to ask you. Yeah. It's about Saturday night, the dance. I want to go, but I know my father wouldn't approve. Uh, Laurie, uh, you, you're making your father out to be an ogre. Uh, we're all going to go. No reason why he'd disapprove. I want to go with Rick. Um, did he ask you? We want to go together. I know if you talk to my father, he'd say yes. Well. I don't know if your father's going to be back in time before the dance. Huh? Well, if he is back in time, will you talk to him? Well, if not, you could give me permission. I'll tell you, Laurie, I, you know, it's, it's not what I think you want. You, your father left you in my charge, and... Well, knowing what he thinks about people who've been in prison... You like I, Rick. Yes, of course I like Rick, but this is different. You no, know, it a... isn't. It isn't. What's the matter with all you old people anyway? You say one thing and you do another. I thought you were different, but you aren't. You're just the same. Well, Laura, you, you, don't, you don't seem to understand. I do, too. I'm not too young. You're all too old, that's all. All you think about is the past. You've forgotten what it's like to have a future. What it's like to be alive, even. Oh, I hope I never get to be like you.
What's that book you're reading? History of Brands. I found it terribly interesting last night, but for some reason or other, I just can't keep my mind on it tonight. Yeah. Same with me. Adding up that column of figures. Four tries, four different answers. She sure was upset. Yeah. I didn't hear much of it, but just from the little I did hear, she was that. Trouble is, she may be right. I tell you, getting old means getting over cautious, over careful. It's no wonder the young folks won't talk to you. Can't trust your judgment. Paul. Of course, the root of the trouble here is that she doesn't think your father cares about her. Well, of course he does. Well, of course he does. Deeply, too. <laughs> Dang fool won't tell her. You gonna talk to him? Yes, I'm gonna talk to him. Her, too. First thing in the morning. Well, I'm going to bed. Yeah. I think I'll join you. Doing up this hour. It ain't even light yet. I couldn't leave without seeing you. I had to wait till you were up. Leave? Why? I don't know. They're all too old. They don't understand anything. But you do. We can talk. You and I. Sure, Laurie, but. Please come with me. Neither of us will have to be alone anymore if you come with me. Laura, you're not alone. You got your father. My father. My father. What does he care about me? He doesn't care at all. He won't let me do what I want. He won't even let me think what I want. It's like living in prison. Oh, Laura, you got no idea what prison's like. I knew you were going to say that. But that's what it's like, honestly. Please come with me. I can't come with you. I got a job in Virginia City. You had a job. Do you really think my father's going to let you keep it? Don't you remember how he treated you yesterday? Laurie, I've been thinking about something your father said yesterday. About fear. And I reckon the trick is, you got to learn to stand up to that fear. Maybe next time. Next time? Well, maybe there won't be a next time, Laurie. You know, all folks ain't like your father. Oh, but they are. All of them. They're all the same, even Uncle Ben. They're hypocrites. They'll never let you forget about your past because they can't forget about it. Rick, there can be a whole new world for us, for you and me.
better go. My father will miss me. Lori? You shut your bag. I can't let you go alone. Come on, I'll saddle a horse. You think he can carry both of us? He'll have to. He's all I got. I ain't no horse thief. stage is wondering what will happen when I catch up with him. I wonder, too. Daily journal to be given to my daughter, Laurie, in case of my death. She thinks the father doesn't care. We gotta find Laurie. She's I'll check the back room. All right. Rick's horse is the only other one that's gone. Oh, maybe the riding double. That'll slow them up anyway. Yeah, I'll saddle the horses, huh? No, no. Just saddle mine. I want you here in case I miss Luke and the boys on the road. I'll get my things. That boy, Ben. We well, found the grave, Pa, just like Rick said. And this, Billy's gun, his name scratched on the butt plate. When we get back to the Ponderosa, I'm going to have a little talk with that boy, Ben. Well, I'm afraid you're not going to be able to. He's not there. What do you mean, he's not there? He's gone, Luke. I can't say as I blame him. I was a little tough on him. I might as well get back to the ranch. Well, laurie has gone, too. Sometime during the night, they both left. Uh, unless you've got the reward money with you, it's it's missing, too. You let that prison dirt take my daughter. Ben, if any harm comes to my child, how long have they been gone? At least a couple of hours. We hit this road about a mile back. If they're headed for Virginia City, they've already passed the junction. You fellas take the cross the city road. All right. Come on. 
Why are you stopping? We're off to Ponderosa now. We've got some talking to do. Frank, if my father gets... They could be after us right now. Well, it can't be helped, Lori. I mean, us running off in the nowhere like this is just plain crazy. Now, my horse can't carry us both forever. We've got to make some plans. Maybe we can catch a stage or something. Fine. Where to? Well, Lori, I ain't got no money on me. What I got's in the bank, and that don't amount to much. I told you I've got money. A thousand dollars. Oh, Lori, you didn't take that from the Cartwrights, did you? Of course not. It's the reward money. For Billy Miller, alive or dead. You were the one who knew, so... Here. Take it. It's yours. As far as I know, there was no reward offered. Even if there was, your father or a court would have to hand it out. You've taken this money just the same as stealing it. Don't you see that? No, I don't. Well, you're the one who said they'd never forget my past. I reckon this just about guarantees it. Well, who cares? We're going to change our names anyway. I'm taking it back, Lori. I'm taking you back, too. Running away trying to forget everything that ever happened just don't work. Little Lori, why don't you grow up? You know, a man can't be just what he wants to be. He's what he's been, what he is, what he hopes to be. Everybody is. So are you. <laughs> Come here, Lori. You wouldn't shoot him, Father. Do as I say, while you can't move. The boy's not armed, Luke. Luke. She was gonna do, you know. That's what I'm still fixing to do. Yeah, the reward money. That's what you really came after, isn't it? No, Lori. I came after you. Oh, Father, stop it. And don't try to send Rick back to prison. I took it. He showed you where Billy Miller was. It belongs to him. Even so, he was going to return it. I don't understand, Lori. Why do you want to leave? Oh, you don't understand. You wouldn't have to ask why. What difference does it make? You don't care about me. You never have. Laurie. You've never had any time in your life for me, ever. You always sending me away, keeping me away. It was all for you, Laurie. Everything I did was for you. How could it have been for me? My own father ends up a stranger. He never even wrote me, except maybe once a year. I bet you never even thought about me. Have a look. Luke, tell her. They found this in your father's bedroom after you left. It's a, it's a daily journal which he wrote for you. be given to my daughter, Lori, in case of my death. He wrote to you every day. Sometimes a word, sometimes a, a whole page. He thought of you all the time. Why in a journal? 
Why didn't you put it in a letter? Life hasn't always been pretty for me, Laurie. Sometimes, no, most times, the things I put down weren't seemly for a little girl to read. I'm not a little girl anymore. Yes, I know that now. I should have written all along. I should have, but I guess it's a little late to start that now. May I read it now? Sure, if you want to. It's yours to keep. Now, should we get back to the Ponderosa? If we can find those horses you spooked, Luke. They figure California is the place for the future. When I heard that, I thought we ought to look around out there before settling someplace else. That makes sense, doesn't it, Ben? If Laurie says so. Evening, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, hello, Rick. Marshal. Ben here's been telling me that you have hopes of taking over the Smithy one of these days. Well, I hope to, sir. One of these days. Maybe when I get a little something put aside. I deposit a thousand dollars to your account this afternoon. Maybe it'll help. Like Laurie says, it does belong to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, what I came to ask about... Well, I'd like your permission to dance with Laurie, sir. Well, I'd say that'd be up to her. If she wants to, I have no objection. Thank you. That didn't hurt too much, did it? No, but it takes some getting used to. How about some more punch? How about something a little stronger? I'm with you. 